Bernard, and I'm going to tell you today about data dictionaries. Having a clear understanding of the data you're working with is crucial, uh, which is why having a data dictionary is uh, so important. When you have a data set without clear metadata, it can be difficult for others to understand the data specifics. This lack of information can make reproducing a study impossible because without complete data, metadata, and information about the resources used to generate the data, it becomes challenging to replicate a study accurately. A data dictionary is especially focused on the analysis potential of the data. The more meaningful variables you can associate with your data, the better the reuse potential. A data dictionary can help you make explicit what future users would otherwise have to guess about the presentation of the data. And by providing a clear and concise description of each variable, data dictionaries ensure that all users um, have access to the same uh, understanding of the data. The data dictionary serves as a crucial document that provides detailed information about the variables and structures of a given data set. This document is uh, usually presented as a spreadsheet file or a collection of such files, which uh, unambiguously defines and annotates all the variables collected in a project and associated uh, with uh, a data set. One of the significant benefits of creating FAIR data dictionary is uh, that it enables the creation of a machine actionable list of variables, which helps increase uh, the interoperability potential of a data set. The FAIR principles provide a clear set of guidelines that highlight the essential details uh, that should be included in both data and metadata to make them more findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Data refers to the recorded observations of a biological entity or models that have been studied, while metadata describes the primary data and the resources that were used to generate it. In a biological context, metadata is uh, uh, particularly useful as it can provide additional information on samples, including their sex, disease, or tissue source site. Uh, metadata can also include information about uh, resources such as cell lines and antibodies. In addition, metadata can describe experimental protocols, uh, bioinformatic processes, and the tools that were used to generate the data. This information can be crucial for understanding the data generation process, especially in biomedical research. Metadata can also include details about the hardware and software versions, processing batch information, and uh, other details necessary to interpret the data. Some uh, biomedical disciplines have specific metadata standards uh, that are used to describe information that is expected to accompany data sets. For example, genomics, proteomics use the MIAME uh, or the MinSeqi um, all have their own uh, metadata standards. Um, these standards are designed to ensure that the data is of high quality and can be interpreted uh, easily by researchers. When creating a data dictionary, uh, the fields that should be included depend entirely on the specific needs of the project and its context. To identify the recommended fields for your subject area, it is recommended to review existing community standards or minimum information checklists. One helpful resource is Fair Sharing, uh, which has sections specifically dedicated to minimal checklists. If your project involves clinical uh, trial data, it's important to become familiar with the CDISC um, therapeutic area annotation profiles. It's important to capture all relevant uh, variables for your plant or potential meaningful analyses. This means that variables need to be captured in the correct format and standardized if appropriate. Additionally, providing unambiguous uh, uh, 
uh, textual information um, is uh, crucial uh, in ensuring that all users of the data dictionary understand the meaning of each variable. Finally, it's also important to indicate how missing values are dealt with, uh, such as through the use of symbols like uh, dash or NAN. Getting from data to metadata involves the process of creating a present representation model that aligns with existing scientific ontologies. One way to achieve this is through dictionary mapping, which involves assigning metadata to data elements based on a predefined set of rules. In this process, a data dictionary mapping diagram is created, which uh, with each uh, box um, in corresponding to a column is labeled with a relation. In this example, the blue rounded boxes contain the resource URIs of the ontologies, while the white boxes are generated on a pair a row or column basis. The result is a semantic representation of a data column with its relationship uh, to its metadata and suitable ontologies. Ontologies are essential tools in the world of data and information management. They serve as globally unique persistent identifiers, which means that they are used to eliminate ambiguity in uh, identifying uh, different data sets and uh, projects. By providing a clear and concise way to identify these projects, ontologies increase the chance of relating them uh, to other projects, thereby enabling better uh, collaboration and data sharing. One of the most significant benefits of using ontologies is the ability to establish controlled vocabularies that provide a common language for humans and machines. These vocabularies use semantic relationships uh, to define the meaning of various terms, which can be used to represent complex information about different concepts. Some of the relevant ontologies our research context, uh, in our research context include uh, geneontology.org, Uberon Autonomy Ontology, and the Ontology for Biomedical Investigations. So a good starting point to look up ontologies, by the way, is uh, uh, in our field is ontology.b. Uh, These built-in uh, hierarchies enables non-humans to classify and therefore understand the information provided, like in this example, uh, real-time PCR machines. And you see the entire hierarchy uh, presented here. Also, um, um, certain ontologies, uh, like here the OBI, have a clear uh, description for uh, machines, for instance, that can be used, but also statistical processes or even specimen. The process of creating a data dictionary uh, can be described in seven uh, different steps. Uh, which is first of all uh, to identify the variables uh, in your data set. When you have all the, the variables, you need to start to define them in a clear and concise language and determine uh, the data types for each variable, such as, for instance, categorical, is it numerical or uh, just text. If applicable, uh, determine the range of certain values and describe if uh, certain data uh, have a relationship with each other, for instance, grouping, group data or nested variables. Include any relevant uh, metadata that can be analyzed, maybe not by you, but maybe by others later, including also data cleaning processes or uh, any data collection method that was used also to, uh, for instance, uh, um, limit uh, certain assumptions or the data output. In the end, make sure that the format of the document that you use is clear and organized. 
So where to start? Um, well, when you start building your data dictionaries, here's a list of elements that you uh, should consider uh, as a starting point. Starting out with the file name, of course, and the variable name uh, label um, and so on. So um, this as a starting point. Um, I recommend using Excel for this um, and um, the, the first row defines always uh, the, the variables with the exception uh, where the first uh, each row defines a variable except for the first row here the aspect headers uh, are represented and also uh, here's a link to a starter template um, for a data dictionary. So once your data dictionary is completed, what are you going to do with it? Well, you have to associate somehow with your data. So if you're using uh, Excel workbooks, for instance, for your data, you can add a data dictionary as a separate sheet, for instance. So it's always attached to your data. When you're using CSV or TSV files, add an additional TS TSV file that contains the dictionary. And here again, a little snapshot uh, what is, um, a data dictionary can uh, look like. What else is there to know? Well, you also should provide descriptive metadata for the data dictionary itself in a separate text file, of course. So include, for instance, the, tile, the file name with the extension. Uh, the authors that were included in generating the data dictionary with their ORCID, uh, the license uh, that is uh, used, and also the version number if you have several versions, for instance, of your data dictionary. And if applicable, also you can use the checksum um, of the file to make sure that uh, when it's copied, that it's complete. And also keep in mind to keep your data dictionary up to date, especially if you move from project to project uh, or your project evolves, for instance, and you start to capture other data or maybe not include certain data types anymore. So um, keep it up to date, please. Yeah, and here are the sources uh, also listed where you can also find more information that I presented here. And uh, with this, I am at the end. Thank you. And uh, yeah, good luck creating data.